sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, let's call this meeting to order. It is uh, 6.11, it looks like. <laughs> so we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance.
a chance to review the minutes. <clears throat> Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? May I get a motion to approve the minutes of the April 20th, 2016 Budget Committee meeting as presented? I'll make that motion. Also. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Budget Committee minutes for April 20th as presented. <coughs> All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, aye. 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 Okay, so that passes. So we'll move on to operating procedures. Just as a reminder, a quorum of six budget committee members must be present to conduct the business of the budget committee. Any member may call for a straw vote to include, adjust, or delete items, or the amount of money from the or an amount of money from the proposed budget. The majority of votes will decide the action taken. All committee members are encouraged to request additional information or give opinion on any item. Salaries, object 100, and benefits, object 200 are the responsibility of the Board of Directors and are subject to ratified collective bargaining agreements. All right. So I think we can move on to talk about uh, the funds in Janet. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, there should be about three tabs backwards over there for you. Um, a couple of things happened um, the last week and a half or so. Um, I did make some changes. It's in 100 it surrounds around the um, transfers um, and if you go to um, where do I start here? first of all let's start at 240 it'd be the first tab, uh, the, the last the third tab excuse me um, fund 240 I uh, went back through and you know, I was just double checking stuff and making sure that I didn't miss anything just for good measure, again. <laughs> um, but I had a negative number sitting in um, um, on 240, which then decreased my transfer to, to the cafeterias on Thurman General, which was good news because it went from 97000 down to 71000 um, And so we made that adjustment. Um, as you can see, it's a total of 213000 um, towards the bottom of the page there. Um, for an inter fund transfer on um, fund 240, which then created um, in fund 100 about 78,000 of money freed up. So we sat down had an admin meeting this morning, and we added um, a position back in. Um, and so we um, went ahead and, and I have it stashed in the elementary school, um, but it's kind of we're all in the planning stages, so it probably could end up at the elementary, but um, but we did add back in that FTE, certified FTE teacher back in the equation. The other thing that happened um, with that 78,000, um, I had a little bit of leeway, um, which we'll get to fund 601, which is that tuition reimbursement, which we reimburse um, staff for trainings, professional development, or I guess um, not so much for training and professional development, the schooling, I should say, is a better word. Um, we were targeted last um, budget meeting for 11000 I went ahead and moved that to 15000 The reason why I did that, one, I had money left over that we could we could put somewhere, um, but I know that the board of directors was very adamant with, in a lot of discussion as far as being um, part of our retention program is, you know, we're paying for the some of their schooling and that sort of thing, which um, we can get to the 601 fund here in just a little bit. But I did want to make note that we did make that change in fund 100 for those two um, transfers. And the and then the very first tab there just shows the difference um, of that other teacher coming in on there. So just to give you that highlight, I guess. Any questions on that or concern? This is my first tab. Let's pick the page across. Oh, out. yeah. That page is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this page is hot. Bad day. <laughs> yeah. It should be the front page there. Hey. Drum <laughs> <laughs> or something. Okay. So you'll see the bottom line is changed. Okay. Yeah. So that's where my added FTE is. And of course, when we report. Um, 
our, our budget figures is on the whole, so so our teachers could end up you know shuffled around. And like I mentioned before, at the last or budget meeting, excuse me, was that um, a lot happened between now and September first. So <laughs> okay, so um, with that, if anybody doesn't have any um, concerns or questions, we'll get to the fund six hundred one. But otherwise, we've been through 100 and 240, and those are the changes that were made. Good news. Yeah. It was, it was a good day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you think that's going to go to the elementary school, or you're not sure? Well, we're kind of still in planning phases. Um, I targeted it there. Um, you know, we um, had a position there that we didn't renew because the individual wasn't coming back. Um, That's the fifth grade. Yeah, or would be fourth the, grade. Yeah. Fourth grade now could be the fifth grade teacher. So or maybe music. Or maybe the music or you know, something along those lines. So it just kind of depends on mm -hmm. you know, our community. That's what it means. So mm -hmm. thank you. I'm glad, to, glad to see that. <laughs> so the rest of the funds. Um, to be honest with you, these should go pretty fast. They're federal, state funds, mixture thereof. Um, they sh we should be able to go pretty fast. Most of it's salaries, um, so and it's pretty well fixed. Um, you know, they determine how much we get, and that's that. So um, we'll start with um, that fund 273, which there should be a tab for it yellow there for you. I did show revenue and expenditure because I was saving the paper yesterday too and did it back to back. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> so the, the 273 is an SPNR9 which is um, a, basically a spec ed um, small grant. Uh, last year we budgeted 1455. This year we're at 1647. We use that like, primarily for um, travel. Um, so that one they do conferences and um, it'll be on the back side. Um, conferences, you know, if any type of travel. I know that they do some um, file review. We'll take it out of there. Those are all eligible for that. So, um, so it's pretty plain and simple um, on that. The Fund 274 is also an enhancement grant. Um, same deal there. We budgeted $15.91 last year. This year, um, I, I expect it to stay pretty stagnant um, from the prior year. <clears throat> Again, that's another travel um, <coughs> for, um, for our spec ed. Okay, so then we move on. Any questions? Pretty self-explanatory really on that. So the next one is um, a bigger grant, Fund 281. Um, again, it's front and back. So this is also determined by um, our, our folks up at ODE. I estimate it to be about 145000 this year um, with what we have um, coming out of that, which, which is totally salaries. And again, that, that's determined by the board, etc. cetera. Um, but it looks like we will probably end up getting a, a transfer of about 66,533 out of the general fund, which you can see that uh, fund transfer, and then it's also back here in fund 100 is going out. Um, and so in the past, we've had enough funds, or we've had funds from prior year because we haven't expended it all. I don't, I expect to run out at the end of this year, so I won't have any carryover funds from uh, 15, 16 into 16, 17. So I'm anticipating that that the, the, the general fund will transfer. And again, it's we book it completely for salaries, um, and, and it's a it's a special education grant also. Any questions on that? Fund 291 is a Title I-A. Um, again, um, this is a salary type situation. 
um, they did roll out with, and, and you'll have to kind of ignore the 1314 and 1415 because we flip flop between years um, fund numbers. And so these, those, fund, those fund numbers right there were carryover numbers. Um, and so this year's a whole new year. So 222,000 is what's estimated from ODE right now. Um, and then the 4,600, I'm anticipating we can backfill um, off of our, our 2A grant. Um, so I think we will be able to move those funds around. Um, again, salaries, um, 227,000 total on each end there. Any questions on Title one a And we won't have those final figures until August, <laughs> right before we start, so. Okay, so the Title 6B, which is, is, um. Innovative programs. There, thanks. <laughs> that 293, which is also back-to-back. -back. This is also, um, okay, this is the one, okay. This one, this one I need to explain to you just a little bit. Um, we'll have carryover funds out of this, um, uh, out of this fund. So 293 currently we have on the books for this year. So the 10,650 that you see um, on page one, that is actually going, what I anticipate to carry over from the 15-16 grant. Now, I, what, how I did this, for a lack of um, anything better to do um, as far as our com computer program, what happens is is that when we have when we have in between years 15, 16, and 16, 17, we have to expend 15, 16 first, and then 16, 17 can get come into play after that. Um, what I had done when we budgeted is um, the fund 294 is going to be the 16. 17 for the 43,876 for the new year. And so what I have done is all the expenditures are sitting in fund 294 as a budget item because by the time we get done, we'll move back and forth the 10,000, you know, roughly the 10,000 out of there to cover, to expend that grant and then the rest of it will come over to um, the new year of 1617. So it's kind of a combination between the two, the two funds. You'll show no expenditure <coughs> in 293, but it's sitting in 294 because they'll work one than the other. Um, and then if you look on the back side, I also anticipate a little bit of rollover at the end of 17 for that also, which is, I'm roughly thinking about 3,800 on that. Pretty much your thing called REIT flux and Title VI takes all the smaller grants, Title VI takes all the smaller grants. When you're a small school district like us, you're in the, what they call the REIT flux district. So what we can do, we take all those little chunks of money that are a lot of this through Title VI B and we roll them into Title I A to help pay for all those salaries. The other thing that uh, 6B pays for are, are the homework clubs that we have at ADA. There's some stipends on that that uh, 6B takes care of. So. How many people are um, employed from the Title I-A? We have one certified teacher and four classified assistants, paraprofessionals. So, uh, I, yeah, I had a question about that too. So we combine Title I so the and by law we can roll a six B or idea. pay for Title One employee. No, they're, 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 those are two separate things. Right. Yeah, IDEA is the special or special education, and then um, Title One is. So we've got three for the IDEA and four for Title One. So those are they combining to pay? The same individuals, or no. we've got seven. We have to separately and distinctly separate those out. Seven we don't different people. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so this shows uh, one licensed and three classified. Mm -hmm. Well, we have we, we probably have one of those here. Six B. Six B has a classified 
stab in it also. That'd be the case. Okay. So it has this one. Yeah. So it should show one. And right here, there's some additional salary in there. And that's where our homework club is at. It's just the last one. I don't know. But, I mean, well, there's no. Okay. So it's for special ed and Title 1A, it's one teacher and. Did you know, two separate. Two separate, two separate deals, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. Title 1's <laughs> reading and math. Is it um, case, case six is designated by the way. The elementary school is Title One school, high school, middle school. Is but it's all for kids that need help. It's, yeah, it's, it's through the you reading know interventions. the reading interventions, the math interventions. It's the whole RTI response to intervention that's all tied to that. I mean, it's it's basically you know, assessing all kids' reading skills and we build these interventions to finally hone each student's reading skill and help them with that. And that's what the Title I crew do is substantially improve, help to improve reading of students. So uh, I don't know what to call these programs, but of the interventional type programs, do we have one, two teachers and? No, it sits in conjunction with the staff. We have breakout interventions and everything else. Basically the Title I teacher she is the one that basically you know, prescribes the program that goes out to all these students in conjunction with the homeroom teachers and with the paraprofessionals. And how many assistants do we have in those two programs? Well, in Title A, we have three in town. We have one out at Union uh, Special Education. We talked about that last time. And then we have three down there. And we have, help me, gentlemen, and maybe we have up here paraprofessionals. It's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you bet. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So moving on, then Title Three, which is um, is our ELL. Okay. Yeah, ELL program. Order of the ESL. <laughs> um. That one, um, we don't we don't get a lot from there, but we do um, get a little bit, which is about five thousand roughly. <coughs> we were pretty close to that this year. In actual, we were I think we're on budget or not on budget, but on actual, we, they allocated maybe forty eight hundred to us last year. Um, so same deal. There's a on the back side the the. Re expenditures to that there's a there's a stipend stipend that runs along with it um, so that salary situation there they do do some travel <coughs> out of there and um, also get some supplies um, to help with, with the English learner any questions on that that's an interesting federal fund, and you know these other federal funds you looked at. You, know, you can uh, take salaries out of those funds, but Title Three does not allow salaries. So we paid them to fund our country. Yes, we do. Okay, so then moving on to two ninety eight, which is the well. Any other questions? Sorry. Not trying to rush all of you today. <laughs> um, fund 299 and the 98, excuse me, is our wellness grant. So I had to have a refresher course on this one because this this one is self self sufficient for right now. Um, they have uh, grant money, and um, I believe this is the third year that they will have grant money. Is that right, Steve? Mm -hmm. is that third year. So. Yes. Okay. So. Um, uh, and they are totally self-sufficient. What they get for their grant, that's what they spend it on. Um, we do have a couple of stipends that come out of there, and then um, they buy um, all kinds of incentives and and um, t-shirts and water and <laughs> yeah, all kinds of yeah. yeah, all kinds of good stuff. So what we're anticipating. Um, <coughs> 
for 16, 17, keep in mind this one's a hard one for me because it runs on a calendar year from January to December. And we're of course on July to June. <laughs> so there, at July 1, their beginning of the amount should be about 8,300 um, estimated right at this moment. And then coming in, they have a little, they have a little bit left at six, which would be six thousand, which they'll get that in January of 2017. At that point, that's when that grant will stop. Is January? That should get them from January to, to June, and then from there, we'll they'll be on our, we'll be helping them out with that. So we will get them on a on a fiscal year in the next fiscal year. Um, so again, um, they do do a little bit of uh, professional uh, kind of training, travel a little bit, um, stipends, and they, like I said, they do do supplies. I leave that pretty open <coughs> um, for them as, as far as, as what they, they spend that on. Um, they may end up... Um, you know, they may end up looking at that, going in to find more equipment or something like that if they thought they had enough funds to do that. So we leave that well open. Um, but thus far, all of this has come out of that grant, even the furs and the... Correct. All of everything. that. Yeah, everything comes out of that grant. Yeah. Um, they're, they're probably one of the best grants to work with because they they will back, you know, let us back into that, that segment and get the whole Is this grant through OEB? Your OEA. Yeah, OEA. Yeah. And it's for all the levels or just? This is actually our staff. Oh, staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What is the purpose? Yeah. So, so, so it's staff wellness. Okay. They promote that wellness through this grant. Okay. So it's so specifically fitness for staff. Staff. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're. And it's expanded every year. First year it was just staff only, then it went to staff and spouses. Now it's like substitutes, uh, ESD employees. Oh, yeah. um, so it's expanded every year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. 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 So let me grab my notes here on this next one. Um, so fourteen thousand is proposed to come from the school for this. Not from the school, from the grant. They're, they're we are totally sustainable. Yeah, they're they're totally sustainable. We did talk about it, um, yeah. and I, Brandy and I, I had to. Re that's why I refresh my memory what we were doing. But there's we'll actually <coughs> June of 17 or July of 17. So really, you probably won't hear anything about sustainability until within 16, 17. Okay. Keep us on. Yes, so like this is good to yeah. go in, but down the road is your next time. I remember, I think that it has a question about how can we sustain this? Right. Yeah. That was a great idea. Right. I remember. So I'm, I was off here. I was thinking it was well, this we coming July. We were thinking that this. Yeah. Yeah. But then we cleared <laughs> Okay, so uh, 450. So this is the maintenance reserve fund. Um, and we fixed the roof, right? Mm. <laughs> right, you're about to find out. <laughs>
time we get done with that, we'll be about 19,000 in the beginning of the balance there. Now, um, the 4,200 um, out at Union, we have the two um, duplexes, if you will, the teachers, as you call it. Um, we do rent out the one side of that, so that's where that stems from. <coughs> the contributions, that is mostly donations for the 88 playground. Um, this is where um, has several But she does have some secured funds of about 14000 And I just went with what she had secured at this point because we don't know what that number is going to be. So um, then what we figured we did, we would we could go ahead and transfer 20000 out of the general fund to help support wherever we did. So if you look down on the second, or excuse me, the next page for the expenditures, of course, we have electricity um, that comes out of that out at Union. Um, that's uh, for the teacherage and, and um, that sort of thing. There's property insurance out there that we pay, and then there's also um, some taxes that we pay out of there. Now, so our sole um, concentration on this coming year is that 88 playground, and so at 57,000 is what we anticipate to do in the expenditures. Um, it's quite an extensive project out there. Um, we go over there tearing up, tearing up the cement and tearing up the cement to the asphalt, um, laying saw on. So are we, we're adding 57 to the 75 of our budget last year. The 57,000. Scotch lines and all that good stuff that goes out there. And our, our other 
or other reasoning is um, to do it in phases was and the piece, we've got to have a soccer field done by June 30th. That's our deadline. We've just got to have it done. Um, so that the soccer field can actually be utilized this year to its capacity. Um, so that leaves me July 1 to start on the cake truly. So we've only got like two months plus everything that oh, gets fixed inside. So we actually broke it down and decided, okay, let's take it in the phase and do what we can and get. Because um, I'd like to see the district do at least half of it. We need to pay. That's ours. It is ours, yes. Oh, absolutely. So um, we just needed to do it in the phase this year and to show that we're still you know, we've still got momentum even though we have to scale back on our budget a little bit too. So we were trying to do a, a kind of a happy medium technique. Um, when we looked at it, we you know, originally could cut um, or decided not to redo a position. To us, a position is a heck of a lot of importance right now. Um, you know, that's our priority. So it's and conceivable some of this 49,000 will carry over too, because right. fundraising yeah. will only have more time. Yeah. So we're breaking our contribution down into two yeah. parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is yeah. another very good job of getting out to talk to the talk to groups and things and parts. And, and, uh, the Rotary Duck Race is yeah. totally committed to this problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. um, and then also, if you look on the next there, there's about 33,000 that goes to the roof that wherever on this district it might go at. <laughs> um, so we do have funds set aside for that roof because that was a more concern. <coughs> also worried about um, within there. Otherwise, we are not doing the extent of what we did last year. There's just no that impact this year. Any other questions on that? Okay. So the 457, this one's kind of new. Um, we had to do a, a good year um, uh, supplemental for the 457 fund, which is the D DMS elevator project. <coughs> so with that, we did get funds this year um, in the amount of about 300000 um, along with another 250000 from SCOED and the 300000 from the Air Memorial Trust. Um, currently, um, the elevator is ready to be put in, essentially right now. We're just waiting on the elevator. Um, that should be here sometime towards the end of this month. And then we have extended this out to July 10th to be completely finished um, with the elevator piece of it. So, um, so with with that, um, we'll look for um, 250,000 coming in, um, and a we'll have that carryover of 93,000 um, coming in also. Um, that'll include the balance of our, our um, project manager, um, which I anticipate about roughly around $900 left to pay him out. Um, the 2,000. Uh, will be for ZCS um, what they have agreed ZCS has agreed to do all the drawings um, and, and with the de with the elevator um, is is the main floor that is supposed to be completed as well with a, um, a redesign on the bathroom on that main floor on that um, ILC side is that the north side yes <laughs> okay <laughs> so all of that is supposed to be done the top floor is not going to be touched yet we don't have Funds for the, the top floor. These two, these two grants are very specific as to it's the main floor elevator. Period. End of discussion. So um, we do have a contract going out for the main floor as far as sprinklers um, at the main floor. Um, ZCS is we're in very close contact on this grant. This grant is getting watched pretty heavily um, so that we do not dip into the general fund. It, if it runs out of funds, they're done. Funding stalls. It stops. Like, you know, the elevator might be hanging by one string. I, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but it will stop because we have, 
we have committed to our staff and the community that there will be no general funds associated with with this DMS project that we have going on right now. Um, if you will recall, there was a pretty good contingency about the um, prior project that went way over budget. Um, and so we are doing everything we can to go ahead and honor the two grants and come, you know, go forward with them. Um, uh, but nothing to come, nothing to backfill it with when they're done. When there's no money left, there's no money left. <laughs> I do appreciate that you're um, trying to watch that, but I also do understand it's always going to be a school district building. It's always going to be in your ownership. So yes. unless you get a lucky um, agreement with someone to take that on. So while I hope you don't have to put any school district dollars into it, I, at some point in time, you will. It's, true. it's yeah. going to be you in will. your ownership. So yes, you will. Um, you and that, and I fully agree with that. And right at the moment, we've got um, LCRI that's actually trying to raise funds for us to, to finish the top floor and that sort of thing. And and at that point, you know, that'll be a whole new ball game. We'll rebid that. We'll, you know, it'll be a whole new project, really. And um, you know, um, we just knew that this year was a rebuilding year for, for this whole school district, and we knew there is no way to backfill, no way to backfill on that. And, and we really shouldn't. No, um, you guys did a couple other big projects that took general fund dollars. Oh, gosh, yes. To go into those things, yes. too. So, yes. So, somewhere we've been there, that project be heavy. Mm -hmm. Yes. For a little while. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's our intentions with that, um, and I'm pretty sure it's a full time job. That's what I've decided. <laughs> I think you know if we have to look down the road, and you know, if Red Rock comes in, and it's a boom, and brings lots of students, and yeah, we will have to face the inevitable fact that we're going to have to go back in that building probably in the form of the middle school or whatever. That top floor, you know, basically. Availability if there would be three classrooms. Now, in the basement, I think there's like still like six classrooms in the basement. So, I'm going to that. So, anyway. so, it's a good dream to have maybe someday when the economy comes here. We have lots of people and lots of kids. So. All right. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, so the, this one is going to be new this year, this 458. Um, union um, applied for a grant out at, uh, or for Union, um, and part of it was to be for um, Fremont Hay also. Um, the concentration will probably most likely be upon, on Union at this point. Um, it will be a greenhouse that this grant is through ODE. Um, so, uh, completely through um, ODE, um, greenhouse, a reading garden, um, all the supplies that go with it, you know, planting supplies, and um, the whole the whole nine yards. Now, our we have it on um, a proposed budget. They have offered us the grant, so we do have the grant, and on Monday night it will be before the board to approve the grant. Um, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> um, so the do the grant dollar is thirty nine thousand seven hundred and eighteen, um, and basically um, this will be a self sufficient one as well um, for this year. Um, after after the time frame, um, uh, after they expend these funds, then we'll look at, at keeping it sustained um, along with general funds. Um, you know, as, as much as we possibly can. Um, so it includes the greenhouse, an installation of the greenhouse, um, all their supplies, um, uh, putting it in like a, a permanent foundation um, type situation. So it'll be kind of like the one we have by the district office yeah. as far as being, you know, stable and, and not. They had a little greenhouse out there last year, and a good south wind made sure over of it. 
quick on Those are much like that. Good south came down and picked it up. No. So is the greenhouse, the cost of the building the greenhouse, 20588 um, so, so I've got that broke down to um, the greenhouse is about eleven thousand, and then yes, so the the reading garden garden excuse me is about ninety five hundred for the total of the twenty thousand. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and when we look at, um, we've got the, uh, management services in there of about thirty nine hundred. Um, we will have a little bit of our guys involved with that as far as placement, um, making sure we don't hit any water lines, things like that. Um, and then also too, um, I believe that part of the parents club and, and you know, a lot of community effort for him is gonna help put it up and that sort of thing. So um, it's, it's Pretty exciting, um, actually. A little project for them, and then it'll also um, be a little bit of a win. And it's just one source of one grant. Yeah, and it and it can be used for dur uh, permanent durable goods. It's just the greenhouse. Um, okay. The greenhouse. Yeah. See, and they were wanting to put a fence around it. That's where they make it. The fence out. Yeah. It was not the <laughs> and how come? Permanent uh, type structure. So okay. even though the greenhouse will we'll have to put it in as a permanent structure out there right. as far as so it stays in one spot. They don't consider a deer fence permanent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Human ass deer fence. <laughs> That's, why I was from the fence. That's why I was confused. I got the mixed up. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so this will be new, um, and like I said, the board will see it um, Monday night as far as the grant approval. But the offer is, is on the table. So, okay. Um, and again, that won't start till after July 1, just because of the timing um, of the whole thing. So, um, any other questions? Okay. So, for four ninety nine, dollars um, which is that SB 1149 funds that we get um, pretty much every month. Um, I roughly will be about 18700 Right now, we are sitting on about 109000 So our goal is, um, time permitting, um, I went ahead and budgeted. We do have some windows at 80 hay that still need to be replaced. So um, depending on our time constraints for the summer or, you know, maybe we have pretty mild break as far as weather-wise, we can get in there and, and get those things done. So it's on, kind of on the back burner, but it is on agenda to get on for those. Also. Any questions there? Okay, so Fund 600. Um, this past year, we've kind of done away with Fund 600. It's basically an in and an out. Um, what we use that that fund for now is we have retirees that pay us our, their premiums and then we in turn pay their premiums to OEBB and that. Um, then we also have our, our classified employees that are employed for 10 months. Um, most of them have extra taken out or, you know, if that's the case, um, to pay so they have 12 months of insurance. Um, that comes into here. Um, and then we also still have a, um, um, a insurance uh, judgment that stemmed from the union school prior to, that we inherited, I guess, if you will. So all of those things are in and out. The, um, the retirees obviously pay their premiums. We pay it out. That's a zero deal. Um, the 10-month employees, we pay it into that account, and eventually it gets zero as we pay their monthly premiums. And then the um, judgment deal, which is about $2,400 a year, that is also comes from the insurance company. We pay it back out again. So essentially, we're, we'd be at, we would be at zero at the end of the day. Um, and with that, too, we're trying to get, um, we may even, have our retirees go ahead and set up as a self-pay with OEBB because they can do it online and, and be way easier for them than trying to 
come in, but we haven't worked out any details, so I left them in just in case that didn't surface out for us. Any other questions on that? Okay. On 601, this is the tuition reimbursement that I was um, discussing earlier. Um, we have quite a few new teachers that are on, on board um, that also need to have um, required um, schooling that they need to do. Um, yeah. So this is the one that I said that we changed from 11,000 to 15,000. Last year, um, in prior years, I'll back up here for a second, we've had carryover from that account. We haven't, they haven't utilized the whole account. This year we did. We have, again, several student, or several really hired teachers that, that utilized it. Um, so it was a good thing. Um, I used it at 15000 to do that transfer um, because roughly that is what we expended out. So I'm looking, it would probably be about the same this year as about 15000 Sorry, I got it. I'm getting right there. So what? What is? Are we not offering the health insurance to employees the same that we used to? That used to fund a lot more than six hundred. So back on to six hundred. Sure. Yeah. Um, so what happened when I couldn't quite figure out how this was working? Um, because say for instance, say my insurance was a thousand dollars a month, um, and I get a cap of twelve hundred. Well, the two hundred. We have an HRA set up. Well, that 200 should go to that HRA account and be available to that person each month. And so, what they had done in the past, which I think is is reflective of when they managed it themselves. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they were after the fact. So when I went and spent 190 dollars, they would reimburse that 190 dollars. So um, now you have an administrator for your HRA, basically. Yeah. You're not having to do it internally. Right, yes, it is a huge load off. Yeah. Yes, just yeah, write the check off. every month and it either yeah. goes to OEBB or HRA. Okay, and yeah, <laughs> so okay. Um, any other questions on 600? <laughs> so they get the entire amount of account each month. So as we go along monthly and we do the payroll, that's when it gets paid out every month. Okay. Some depending, yeah, well, it makes sense, but depending on what package benefit package you take, some go over their cap and have to pay out of pocket. Right. Some stay under the, and, and then it rolls into the, the health benefit. They give them a number of alternatives as far as coverage. Correct. It seems like the cap should be this is what we'll pay up to. You choose what you want. Right? Mm -hmm. We're not going right. to pay more than that, but you're right. not going to get the right. extra. Right. right. So, so if my cap is 1200 mm -hmm. but my insurance is only 1000 200 of that every month would go to my HRV account. And then that's available to me on it like a, uh, like a wage works type situation. So we only pay, we only pay to that 1200. So whatever, um, you know, the certified is on a different level, they get that. I guess that's what I'm getting at though. If our cap is 1200 and they pick a plan of 1100, that should be it. It's well, an extra hundred. It's put. a way to keep it all equitable across everybody, yes. and to give them an incentive to pick a plan that works best for them, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. still get the whole benefit of the cap. Yes. Single person with no kids may not be interested in yeah, right. A family of four, right? But so that's be there when they have the family of four. It will. Yeah. 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 It's a very nice, very nice benefit. Something that if private and private companies can't do, don't do. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, so exactly. It's, and I would say almost the wow. opposite. Private has more options to do something like that <laughs> than public. Um, I mean, you're looking at people that are now offering insurance opt-out. Yes. Which is allowable, and so yes. just it's all changing so much. But I think the cap and allowing people to benefit from it. Is it an HRA or an HSA? It's an HRA. Which means they lose the money 
when they're not an employee anymore. Correct. Right, but they which have, goes back to the school least, district. Yeah, forfeiture comes back to us. Yeah, but they don't lose it like over a twelve month time period. It, no, it, it's it, not a cat. No, you you can carry it. I got okay. some people that got buku bucks in there um, because they can't spend it all. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but at the end, so say they retire at June thirtieth, mm -hmm. but they have something major happen to them. They need a major surgery that the insurance doesn't fully cover or whatever. They can tap into that and use that to pay if they needed to, as far as that goes. So, and then anything they've got like 90 days after, say, retirement, they leave or whatever. They got 90 days to to get that settled up. After the 90 days, then we go in and say, okay, X didn't spend all theirs. That $200 comes back to us as a forfeiture into our account. Again, um, tuition reimbursement that is run into. We're obligated um, by the CBA for nine thousand. We bumped it to fifteen thousand on our own. So. Any other question? Okay. Um, moving on to fund seven hundred, which so is we're obligated for what? Nine thousand by their, their CBA. Million one 
one million one hundred seventy three three hundred thirty four thousand. Our four hundred stream, which is equipment and maintenance funds, seven hundred sixty eight thousand one hundred seventy six, and of course our six hundred, which is the, the fund six hundred benefit accumulation, six hundred one hundred ten thousand, and then of course seven hundred thirty nine thousand five sixty. So we're looking at 11, 11, 275, Any questions? I like the clarity of building back the position first. That will continue to be priority to you. have no public input or discussion, um, we can move forward with approval of the budget, which is laid out for you there at the back of the uh, binder. So if we can get a motion to approve the 2016-17 school district budget as presented, that would be great. I'll make a motion to approve the budget for the 16-17 fiscal year in a total of 11 million two hundred and fifty five thousand four hundred and seven dollars. Second. Wonderful. It's been moved and seconded that um, the budget for 2016-17 for eleven million two hundred and fifty five thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. Um, be approved as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I do wish there was some sense on there. That that. You know what? It won't let us have $167. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't let us have it. I tried to put it in there. <laughs> it really messes me up. <laughs> okay, so we have a tax rate that we need to approve. Um, the tax rate for fiscal year 2016-17 is four dollars, four point five seven two four dollars <laughs> per one thousand dollars of assessed value. So what we need is a motion to approve that tax rate of four point five seven two dollars per one thousand dollars of assessed value. I'll make a motion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's all my decimals, huh? Four dollars, five thousand seven hundred twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh huh? Uh, about four fifty-eight per thousand. So we have a motion on the table for $4.5724 for $1,000 of assessed value. Can we get a second? We'll second. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So it was second is that we approve that tax rate just discussed. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. The motion passes. Perfect. Wonderful. That we adjourn the meeting. I'm sorry. Okay, so second is that we adjourn the meeting for the budget year. Okay, before yes. you all race off, Mr. Hamilton has a couple of questions. Wow. No, uh, I just want to invite you guys to our our uh, <laughs> fully awareness day, SWAT day Friday, when all day Fremont is going to be down here in the morning, and Hay will be down here in the afternoon. So if you guys want to come down and check that out anytime, more than welcome. Love to have you guys too. Committee. Have, have, come on down. This Friday. What time? Uh, it starts at 8 o'clock. We're all, we're all day. Bring them in the morning until about 11. We're going to lunch down here. We're all in the football field and then they'll get up and they'll be here. And, we'll there. and then also Friday and Saturday from 9 to 4 is the FFA, is the, is the plant sale. So come check that out. A very good stock for sure. Yeah, yeah take a look. They do every year. Mm -hmm.